Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this seismic training session. My name is Laura Mulhall, and today I am joined by my colleague, John Freeberg, an engineer on the customer success team here at Seismic. Today, John will, will review table customization in Seismic. We'll leave a couple minutes for questions at the end, so feel free to write into the question box as we go along. Now, I'll hand it off to John. Hi hey everyone, thanks for uh, taking the time to join us today. Uh, as Laura said, we're going to be reviewing customization of tables within Seismic. So there are really two examples I'd like to go through today, um, one of which is a local ad hoc table that we'll add through the plugin, uh, as well as customize on the live form that will use local variables. Uh, the second is a table on the live form that actually utilizes data sources. So for this example, we'll be using a, a specific Seismic list. Um, that is also, we'll go through the details of that's also applicable to SQL queries, SQL databases, et cetera. So we're going to get started with our first local ad hoc table. So I just have two blank slides here. Um, and our first step is really we're going to open our variable panel. And once we have our variable panel open, in the white space over here, we can right click and we're actually going to add a table variable. So once we add the table variable, I'll call it live form table. We're now going to have a local table variable in our variable panel. And in order to utilize this, we're actually going to add, right click on the live form table, a child variable. So for this, I'll call it values. And you can make these Boolean, date, float, integer, or string. So for our example, we're going to be typing in text. So we'll keep it as a string variable. So once I have my table variable and my child variable, I'm actually going to upload this presentation into my environment, and I'm going to call it table example, or I'll just call it table. So from there, once it's uploaded and processing, and we'll pull up our document here, table. So I can see it just updated right now. So once I open my document, I'm going to access the live form by clicking on form. I'll click edit this. And you'll see when I when I go into edit mode, I have these variables already added on, but I'm going to delete them out for example. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click add. In our local variables, we're going to see our live form table here. When I click on the live form table, I'm going to be given the option to add it into the live form, which I'll do now. So now that it's actually on the live form, we're going to save it. And I'm actually going to click out of the document and back in in order for this change to take place. So if I click into overview and form, when I come back in, I will have the values variable, our child variable, as an option to type in text of value 1. And from here, I can add multiple values that will populate in that dynamic table. Value 2, value 3. And from here, if you actually see these buttons on the right, these little pens, I can delete rows and I can move them up or down with the arrow function here. So in order for this actually to be used in the document, we're going to go back to the plugin and we're actually going to add a dynamic table onto this slide that will utilize this table in these values. So if I click on shape, and create dynamic table, I will have the, I will call it test values. I will, have, I will bind this dynamic table to the live form table here. And you can limit the record count, which I won't do. You can make the maximum records per slide. I'll keep it at 10. And we're going to index from 2 to 2, which just means that it's going to take in not the titles, but the actual child variable. So when I add my values to the columns I'd like to include and click OK, I will now have a table on a slide that's going to capture the values that I typed into the table in the live form. So I'm going to go ahead and upload this presentation again. And we'll populate the form and we'll see our, our values come through in the table. So I'm going to go back to the library to my document. And when I access the form, I'm going to type in a couple values. You 
here. And now when I'm going to click finish and request, we will get those three values coming through in our dynamic table in the main PowerPoint. So let's click load up and we will see test value one, test value two, test value three. So that's the example of adding local ad hoc tables to the live form and getting values to be typed in uh, from the end user. So there are some customizations to this table we could do and I'll just walk through those now. So if we actually go into edit mode, and you click on the E on the table, you'll see that we have this selection count range. So if I set this range to five, this is actually going to tell the table that if I add more than five records to this table, it gives me an error. So you'll see this red box that appears around the table. That means I've added six records. So this is another way to limit the amount of data that gets put into your tables if you have spacing, uh, spacing issues in your presentation. So if I go back to five, I'll be able to add my test value four and test value five, and my table will be good to go. Uh, another customization we can do is we can actually make the uh, table inputs drop down as opposed to text box. So we can do that now. So if I click on the edit button on the actual value, the child variable in the table, I have the ability to change the field type from text box to drop down. And once I've selected drop down, if I click on the data tab on the right, I can actually hard code the values here, and I can add as many as I'd like. Or, so now that I've done that, all of these selections will be dropped down for the value that I want to include. You can also make this data dynamic. So right here in the data tab, when we're in the edit mode of the actual child variable, there's a domain of values that is set to static right now. If I click on this to make it dynamic, and then click on edit, I'll have the ability to access any seismic list that I have in my library to make this dynamic. So we'll do that for an example right now. So if I click on my data sources here, I have a list of offices, generic offices, that we click on the container and then the display field is going to be our office list as well as our value field. If I click OK and save, again, I'm going to go back out and back into the document to make sure the change took place. Now when I click on this, I'm going to have my office list, which is just a seismic list here that I have in Excel, and it's just a generic Boston, Chicago, New York, and San Diego for offices. This are, these are now my options to select on the live form as dropdown. So that is a way to do the local table with text box as well as drop down with static and dynamic uh, content within the actual selection. So if we go back to the plugin, there's one more example for a multi-select selection mode table that I'd like to walk through. So if I open my variable panel, and I'm actually going to use that same exact seismic list of this offices. So it's just there for our example purposes, a couple offices that it will say you want to give the user on the live form the ability to select their office that they're, they're working from. So I'm actually going to insert that data source from my library of offices, which I've already preloaded into the library as a seismic list. I'm going to insert it. And now I have access to that office list within my, uh, within the variable table. So again, I'm going to go to shape and I'm going to create another dynamic table and instead of binding it to my local variable, I'm going to bind it to the offices variable within the, within that data source. So that would be container in my offices, which is the seismic list that I uploaded. So if I click OK on that and I bring over my office list, I will now have a dynamic table tied to the office list as a data source. So I'm going to upload this presentation, click OK, go 
click OK. Now I'm going to go back to my library. I'm going to go to the document table. I'm going to access the form. And now we are going to go to the second page, this blank page on the live form. We're going to edit this. And if you click Add, and you will now see Offices as a data source as something we can utilize in the live form. So if I click on the container, selection mode, so that we can now have multi-select of all the offices we want to include, and click Add, you will see our list that comes from our seismic list is now on the live form with a multi-select option. So if I click Save, and I can also have the option to select all or none, so for our example here, we're going to go ahead and select Boston. We're going to select San Diego. And in this, we're going to select Chicago and New York. And we will finish request and download. We'll now see in the final product that in the local table, we have Boston and San Diego selected. And in the selection, we have Chicago and New York selected. So this is another example of how we can utilize tables in both with dynamic data from a data source as well as local variables to let the user select from either text box or drop down. So that's the, those are the two examples I wanted to walk through today. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take those now. Thanks, John. We have one question here, and everyone else, feel free to write into the question box um, as we go along. Um, this one came in earlier in the first um, half where you were manually inputting um, data. And um, they ask, can you force a format like currency? So when you were, when you were typing in test value 1, test value 2, can you force the format of the cells? Absolutely. So uh, great question. Uh, if you go to the variable panel in the first example of the local ad hoc table, this, this variable here that we created of values, you can right click on this on this variable, click edit variable, and let's say we're doing currency. So we would make it an integer, and then in the format of that variable, we have the ability to select currency, give it five decimal places, one decimal place. Um, we can have multiple symbols in front, as well as do we want to include negatives, do you want to include parentheses around absolute values? So you can actually force the format of those variables within the plugin. And then when you upload it to the live form, if that format doesn't match what's being typed, it'll give the user an error that they have to they have to abide by the formatting of that variable. All right. Thank you, John. I'm just going to wait one more minute just in case people have questions. Absolutely. All right, I think that's all for today. No questions. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending today's training session. I hope you were able to learn more about table customization within Seismic. If you have any additional questions or comments, please feel free to email me directly at lmulhall -L 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 